Today we remember two things. One is the triumphant entry of Jesus in Jerusalem. People begin to accept and acknowledge him as a king. And the second part follows together with that, remembering the passion of our Lord. So these two seems to be both joining each other. His triumphant entry in Jerusalem and his suffering. He is being recognized as a king and he also suffers in this Jerusalem. Coming to suffering, when Jesus is so stressed, overwhelmed with what's coming up, he goes to pray, comes back and uh, awakens his sleeping apostles and followers and goes back to pray again. You see, in this tense moment, he constantly prays. There's a recourse to his father. He's asking them as well to pray. Whom do we turn to when we are going through difficult times, when we are going through hardships and sufferings? And uh, even when he's suffering, even in this overwhelmed moment, you see when Peter slices off the ear of this slave, Jesus reaches out without petition. Without request, Jesus fixes this ear with a miracle. So even in those suffering moments, he recognizes the suffering of others. This comes to him because he himself has gone through suffering. He knows the pain of suffering and that makes him maybe to reach out to others. His own experience makes him to attend to the suffering of others. He also tells Simon, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Simon Peter was supposed to deny that he doesn't know Jesus. And could be when he comes back, returns, weeps and is repentant of what he did. Jesus is asking him, now it's your time to strengthen the faith of your other brothers. So that's the experience. When we go through something, it should help us to help our other brothers and sisters with that experience. And in the triumphant entry of Jesus, Jesus, knowing that he is going to be betrayed, denied, and the same people whom he healed, cured, he is going to see their faces in the crowd shouting, crucify him, crucify him. You can imagine the situation. You have done the best. You have given life to them. Even going against the law on the Sabbath, you have healed them. And now they are there shouting amidst the crowd, crucify him, crucify him. God also enters our hearts. He enters our lives. And knowing that one day we are not going to accept him, we are going to deny him, betray him, maybe won't even bother to remember him after giving us the better life, giving us all the comforts that will just have that callous attitude toward God. We may feel, no, I don't need God. I want to get God away from my life. I'm too busy. My schedule doesn't permit me to attend to God. Life can be very well without God. And we begin to think we don't need God. And in all these situations, God, understanding our future approach, still comes in our hearts, in our lives, makes His dwelling with us. How would our response be? We may feel pity when it comes to the scene of Jesus. It could be even those who were being raised to death that they were there to shout against him, to accuse him and appeal for that crucifixion. How do we go about in our lives? Let us ask God to constantly help us grow in him despite all odds and the difficult situations of life, not only in times of suffering and difficulties, but in all situations that we come closer to God.